When I started at Missouri Primate Foundation, some of them could not even look outside because there weren't even windows. None of the chimps there were happy, none. They spend their entire lives inside a cage. There were times when I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I had such a guilty conscience. Mike would refer to himself as the dominant one. One time, the chimp, Bo, ran up to him, bit his nose off, and Mike had to have several surgeries. It's dangerous. He founded Chimp Party. Even the chimps that went out for parties, for that hour, for whatever they spent out, the other 23 was spent in a cage. And the ones that weren't performing and that weren't doing commercials or homework cards, 24 hours a day in a cage, I wouldn't even call it a life. Emotion transcends language. I mean, you can see the desperation, the emptiness, the self-mutilation. They bite themselves, they pull their hair out. Captive chimpanzees engage in behaviors like rocking. All these atypical behaviors are self-soothing mechanisms to comfort themselves. Well, Mike couldn't stand to watch them rock. He would throw a shoe at the cage or scream at them or go up and get in their face. Chimpanzees hate water and he would spray them for so long and they're screaming at the top of their lungs. It's just torture. I saw a lot of abuse. He would physically hit the female chimps and it was a while before they trusted me enough to let me see some of the things that were really happening. There was never a time where I didn't want to see those chimpanzees free. I didn't know that they were selling baby chimps right away either. There's more than 100 chimpanzees that were sold by Mike and Connie. Tammy is the, the chimp who I saw have her baby taken from her. At about three days old, they used ketamine and a blow dart and they pried her baby off of her. She woke up with no baby and they look for their babies. They lose their appetite, they scream, they suffer such psychological distress and it's, it's completely preventable. Losing a child is the hardest thing a mother can go through. She was depressed. Captivity does not raise years of evolution or our maternal instincts, it just doesn't. They, like us, mourn their babies. Of the people that I knew that bought chimpanzees, nobody did research on what their needs would even be. Travis had a psychotic break as a result of a lifetime of psychological distress and neglect. The unfortunate thing is that what people take away from that is they think that chimpanzees are vicious. The problem is the fact that they're placed in these situations in the first place. When they're put into environments like this, accidents happen, horrible things happen, completely preventable things happen. When chimps reach the age of six or seven and they start puberty, much like humans, they are emotional, rebellious, they have erratic behavior. The average chimp has the combined strength of five human men and can pull and or lift 500 pounds. It was just years and years and years of watching some really, really, really horrible things that made me really want to speak up for the chimpanzees. I called PETA and I said I was a former volunteer and I'd like to help in any way that I can. I wanted to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. And PETA can't do it alone. And one of the issues was not being able to get anybody inside the facility. So I videotaped everything that I saw. Part of the problem is looking away and not doing anything. And when I had an opportunity to do something, I, I did it and, and I would do it again. I have no regrets. If it weren't for PETA, if it weren't for the things that we did do, those chimpanzees wouldn't be free. They shouldn't involuntarily pay the price of their lives for entertainment or to fulfill our need to have a child. They deserve their freedom. And I'm so grateful to PETA. It was worth it.